Hello and good afternoon, CSI 158, section 841 and 847 students who are taking the Cisco Networking Academy Routing and Switching Essentials course at Anne Arundel Community College for the second eight week term during the fall, or I apologize, during the spring 2014 semester. This Packet Tracer tutorial and solution set activity is going to cover Packet Tracer 4.1.3.5 in which we're going to be configuring IPv4 and IPv6 addresses on both PCs and routers. So here we have our addressing table, our objectives, the background. We see that our user exec password is Cisco and the privilege exec password is class. And now we're asked to configure IPv4 addresses on the R1 router and on the LAN devices. So let's go ahead and start on our router. You'll notice it mentions that the serial interface is already configured. So our password here will be Cisco, and again, that's the user exec password. Once we're in user exec mode, when we type enable or EN, we go to transition to privilege exec mode where the password is class. And now we're in privilege exec mode and we'll transition into global config and then into interface config mode for interface gigabit ethernet zero slash zero. So the first thing we'll do is we'll bring our interface up. We'll assign our IP address, which is 172.16.20.1, and our subnet mask, which is different from what we normally see, which is just simply a slash 24 or a 255.255.255.0. We have a slash 25 which is 255.255.255.128. All right, we can put a quick description on here and we'll just say uh, PC1 LAN interface. All right, so we've just gone ahead and we've put the IPv4 configuration on gigabit ethernet zero slash zero. Now we'll transition over to gigabit ethernet zero slash one. We'll bring the interface up We'll go ahead and assign our IP address, which is going to be 172.16.20.129. And then again, we have a slash 25, which is 255.255.255.128. And we'll put a quick description on here that just basically says PC2 LAN interface. All right. Again, router one's serial 00 interface has already been configured, so there's no work that needs to be done there. At this point, we're going to go ahead and save our configuration with the write memory command. And then we'll do a quick show IP interfaces brief to see what our interfaces look like. So we can see the two interface, interfaces that we've configured here, gigabit ethernet 00 and gigabit ethernet 01. Both have the IP addresses we expect, and both interfaces are in an up and up status. All right, so from here, we'll step over to our PCs. The first PC we'll configure will be PC1. And again, this is IPv4 configuration, so it'll be 172.16.20, and PC1 is .10. Again, the subnet mask will match that of the router, 255.255.255.128, and our default gateway is going to be that gigabit ethernet 0 slash 0 interface IP address of 172.16.20.1. All right, so with that configured, let's see if we can ping out to the default gateway first, which is gonna be 172.16.20.1. And so PC1 can successfully ping there. And now can we ping out to the dual stack server, the IPv4 address of 64.100.1. 1.10 and as you would expect our first packet should be a request timeout and then once it's had time to populate the ARP cache we get a response back. Alright so PC1 appears to be properly configured let's go ahead and pull PC2 up. So for PC2 again IPv4 configuration the address is 172.16.20.138. The subnet mask again is a slash 25, 255.255.255.128. And the default gateway here will be the gigabit ethernet zero slash one interface 
that's located on router one, and that default gateway would be 172.16.20.129. All right, so let's first see if we can ping our default gateway, 172.16.20.129, and that works fantastic. Let's go ahead now and try to ping across to PC1, which would be dot 10. And so we're successful there. And now, last but not least, let's ping out to the dual stack server. And that's going to be 1.10. And so on the left hand side of our diagram, of our network diagram here, we've configured everything properly. So PC1, PC2, and router 1 all appear to be properly configured. Let's go ahead and scroll down a little bit. And now we're going to work on the configuration for router 2. And so the right hand side of our diagram is going to be IPv6 configuration. So again, the password is Cisco. The user exec password is Cisco. The privilege exec password is class. And now we're in privilege exec mode. We'll go to global config. And from global config, we're going to go right into interface gigabit ethernet 0 slash 0. So we'll bring that interface up. We're going to assign an IPv6 address. And remember, the command is just a little different. We simply put IPv6 and then address. And so the router 2 gig 00 interface is 2001 colon db8 colon c0de and then colon. And for gigabit ethernet 00, it's 12 colon colon 1 slash 64. All right, and we're also going to put the IPv6 link local address, which is FE80, and it wants it to be set to colon colon two. Oops, I apologize, link local, there we go. All right, so we'll put a quick description on here. We'll simply put PC3 LAN interface. All right, so from here, we'll transition over to gigabit ethernet zero slash one. We'll bring that interface up. We'll apply our IPv6 address to that interface. And this is going to be 2001 colon db8 colon c0de colon. And for gigabit ethernet 0 slash 1, it's 13 colon colon 1 slash 64. We're also going to add in our link local address, our IPv6 link local of fe80 colon colon 2 and we put in there link local. Now you'll notice that FE80 colon colon 2 has been assigned to two interfaces on the same router. And what's critical to remember about the link local addresses is they are locally significant to the subnet on which they're placed. So theoretically, I could put that same link local address if let's say I had 10 interfaces, gigabit uh, ethernet 00 through 09, and all of those went off to different LAN segments, I can still use FE80 colon colon 2 on all 10 of those interfaces because again, it's locally significant to the subnet and uh, as well as the interface on which it's on on that router. Okay, so gigabit ethernet 0, 0 and 0, 01 have been configured. And just like router 1, our serial 0, 0, 001 interface has already been configured for us. So we're going to go ahead and type N. And I'm going to save my configuration. And now let's go ahead and wrap up this packet tracer by configuring the IPv6 information on our PCs. So 2001 colon db8 colon c0de colon pc3 is going to be 12 colon colon a. And that is a slash 64. All right, our link local address is already generated for us. And so our IPv6 gateway address is not the global unicast address, which is that 2001 colon db8 colon code. Our IPv6 gateway address, we're going to use the link local address because again, it's locally significant on this link. So FE80 colon colon 2. And then let's go ahead and let's test our connectivity. So there's a little more work to be done here when you're pinging a IPv6 address, C0DE colon and this is PC3 so 12 colon colon 1 all right so I can ping my default gateway now let me see if I can ping out to the dual stack server of 2001 colon db8 colon c0de 
colon, oh, whoops, I apologize, 100, colon, 1, colon, colon, A. And let me make sure I get the ping in there. All right. And so I can also ping out to that dual stack server. So we'll close down PC3 and we'll finish this packet tracer activity by confirming that we can configure properly PC4 as well as ping PC3 and the dual stack server. db8c0de colon 13 for PC4 colon colon a. And so then we'll put in a slash 64. And again, we're going to use that link local address colon colon 2. And so let's go ahead and try that. Let's say ping 2001 colon db8 colon c0de colon 13 colon colon 1. As you can see, I can successfully ping my PC, I'm sorry, my default gateway. Let's go ahead and ping the dual stack server of 2001 colon db8 colon 100 colon 1 colon colon a. And that works with no issues at all. Let me go ahead and ping PC3. So ping 2001 colon db8 colon code colon 12 colon colon a. And I can ping over to PCA. All right, also as a little guide, as you see here, our completion 100 out of 100. So again, this has been Packet Tracer Activity 4.1.3.5 for Anne Arundel Community College students taking CSI 158, sections 841 and 847 during the second eight week term in the Cisco Networking Academy Routing and Switching Essentials course during the spring 2014 semester. I hope you found this video tutorial helpful and I will see you all in class this week.